YouTube, it's Rod McPherson. I'm in Heathrow Airport, uh, waiting a couple hours wait in between flights, so I thought I'd do a vlog. So, Nessus 5 just came out, and before I left work on Friday, I downloaded and installed it. And compared to 4.4, I'd say that the web interface is much more responsive. When you click from screen to screen, it moves much more quickly than it used to and the report function has improved greatly. Where you used to get just a, a number of vulnerabilities for each machine, um, now it's uh, color highlighted, so they use yellow for a medium priority, red for a high priority, purple for critical, and it's much more convincing, I think, to show somebody a screen full of red get them to uh, update their servers than it is to just show them a number. Numbers don't necessarily mean something to a lot of people, but uh, red is pretty universal. That's bad. Anyway, I don't have internet access here at the airport. I had trouble just getting an IP address on the open network to find out how much they charge for internet, so uh, I don't think I'll be downloading it here, even though I've got the time. Um, I'll have to wait until I get to Spain for that. But for you guys, that's only going to be a couple seconds. So, here we go. Okay, so we're starting from a base install of Debian version 6 just from the net install disk just so that we didn't need to use up a whole lot of disk space. Uh, the only thing installed besides the very basics that are needed is uh, OpenSSH server so that I could upload the uh, Nessus version 5 file to it. So we unpack the Debian uh, Nessus version 5 package and then it tells us that we need to type in this uh, command etc slash init dot d slash nessus d dot uh, sorry space start so we type that in and that starts the Nessus server running. Now at this point we would go to our client machine that we use to manage it, um, except that we need to know what IP address this machine has, because I didn't specify a uh, static address, so we have to use our if config command and find out what its IP address is first. In this case, it's 192.168.1.146. So we go over to our Windows machine, fire up our web browser, and type in HTTPS 192.168.1.146, a colon 8834, and that uh, brings up this message telling saying that our uh, certificate isn't correct, it doesn't have the correct name on it, because we didn't name our server, we didn't set up certificates. So we look at it and it shows that it's the Nessus certificate. We say OK and accept it. And then in my case, I'm also running uh, NoScript, so I have to tell NoScript that it's OK to allow scripts on this page because Nessus is coded in Flash. So we get this Welcome to Nessus page and it tells us that we need to register for an activation code. We've already done that. Uh, you just go to the website and ask for a registration code and they will email one to you. Then we come across this page that's initial account setup. Nessus doesn't use the operating system accounts. It has its own username database. Um, so 
we have to set up a, a user for it. And then it says plugin feed registration, so we have to go to our email, copy and paste the account activation code. Just paste it into the activation code box on this page. And then we hit submit. Next. And it says that we've successfully registered the scanner with Tenable and we successfully created the user. So now we click on the download plugins button and it's fetching the newest set of plugins. There's a new set of plugins every day. Um, Nessus in the background has already set up. Um, a scheduled task if you're on Windows or a cron job if you're on Linux uh, to automatically in the middle of the night download the next set of plugins. There's a new set every day it seems. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a day when there wasn't a new set and I've been using Nessus since at least version 3. Dot something or other. Uh, Now this is just the first progress bar. There's actually two progress bars. The next one moves much slower. So if you're uh, setting this up for yourself, I'd go grab a coffee, maybe even grab lunch. I don't know, sit down and watch a sitcom. Whatever it is you do when your computers are showing progress bars and you've got nothing else to do that's what you ought to be doing right now. Um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about this new version um, and of course I'm going to cut down the, the progress bars a bit because like I said it takes about half an hour on you know your typical system with average internet connection probably it's going to take about half an hour from this point until it's actually usable. As of Nessus version 5, which we're installing now, the user management and the Nessus server configuration are all managed through the same web-based GUI that you use to set up your scans and policy creation that sort of stuff, and your reporting. So there's no longer a need to run any standalone Nessus client or go in and manually edit the nessusd.conf file. Um, that's all done right through the GUI. There's a new host summary dashboard in the reports section of the GUI. When we get there, I'll show it to you. It, aside from listing by vulnerability and saying how many hosts have those vulnerabilities. You can list by host and see how many vulnerabilities are on each host. So you can switch back and forth between those two views. Um, and there's graphical bars that will uh, make it a lot easier to see which are the most vulnerable hosts because They've uh, color-coded the vulnerabilities uh, based on severity. And there are five severity levels, right? There's informational that just gives you, you know, a sort of a heads up, hey, did you know that your server was doing this? Or information about uh, this is the plug-in that we used to get to this information, that sort of thing. Then there's sort of the first real vulnerability level, the low risk, right? Then the medium, the high, and the critical. Um, you can select different filters to filter what you see um, based on the vulnerability publication date or which vulnerability database 
this vulnerability comes from, whether it be CVE, OSVDB, bug track, CERT, or Secunia. Um, you can also filter based on the plugin type, whether it's a local or remote. And it also uh, keeps an audit trail so that if you give a report to say your manager and they come back and say, well, hey, when we did this scan, it should have found this. Why isn't that in this report? You could go back and say, okay, well, we filtered that out based on whatever criteria. You can also create sort of chapter-based reports and it'll automatically organize like a vulnerability chapter, uh, compliance with say PCI chapter or that sort of thing. Um, and your reports can be generated in either the native Nessus formats, which are really only good for passing that data to other tools, or HTML, and we all know what HTML looks like and how easy it is to edit and how poor it is to print, <laughs> uh, which is why they now also have a PDF format. Uh, but PDF requires you to have Oracle Java installed on the Nessus server before you install Nessus itself. If you install Java later, then you have to rerun the install of Nessus which doesn't include all this plugin downloads, just that first little bit that I did at the command line, um, just so that it can see that there's Java there and set it up for PDF creation. The Nessus web server is now IP version 6 compatible, which is great, except you should note that IP version 6 scanning support is only available in Unix and Linux versions of Nessus. The Windows APIs don't give sufficient access to IP version 6 for Nessus to do all of its scans, so IP version 6 scanning is only available on Linux and Unix. Now, Tenable recommends that you have a minimum of two gigs of memory to operate Nessus. And if you're doing big scans, multiple networks, um, they say three, maybe even four if it's really heavy usage, or if you're doing a lot of PDF report generation. This demo machine, uh, it's just an a VMware virtual machine with half a gig of RAM, so it does run on significantly less than two gigs, but their recommendation is two gigs. And they also recommend at least a Pentium 3 running at two gigahertz, or if you're on a Mac, uh, use a dual core Intel running at two gigahertz. And they also recommend deploying it on 64-bit systems, uh, but it does come in a 32-bit version. This that we're installing here is a 32-bit version. It works just fine. Um, they also recommend that if you're running it in VMware, like I am here, uh, that you not use NAT or Network Address Translation, that you use bridge mode, because some of the vulnerability checks, the host enumeration, and the operating system identification won't work properly if they're going through a NAT. Anyway, we're going to skip ahead to the end of the install because you don't want to watch this progress bar for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So we're just going to skip ahead right now. There! We're at the end of the progress bar. Okay, so we're just going to punch in the username and password that we created earlier.
you'll note that it says on mine that it's a home feed. That's because this is my personal one for testing at home. And it tells us that we cannot use a home feed for any sort of commercial business use. Okay, so if we go into the scans menu, up at the top here, and let's add a new scan, and let's test out what Nessus 5 is really like. So we're just going to call this a test scan, and let's see, we'll do a, I think we'll do an external network scan, so this is as if we were somebody on the outside scanning with no prior knowledge of the network. And we're going to give it the whole 192.168.1. whatever network and start it up. So that's running. The scan is successfully running. We can see that it's starting to scan IPs in that subnet. And if we go into reports here, we can see a partial report. <clears throat> it's still running, so it's still adding new stuff. And this shows you what the, the new interface looks like, right? You don't get a whole new screen each time you click. It just sort of gives you a new layer in, right? One more pane added to the set of window panes there. And up at the top here we can select between vulnerability and host summaries. So this shows that it's just scanning so far the 1.1 host. We'll give it some time and we'll come back. Okay, well now that we've completed the scan we can see that it found some high, some medium, some low, a bunch of info. <clears throat> we sort it by hosts. 146 whole. Now let's see. That's us. So, see 146, 146. That's the Nessus scanner itself. It found one high vulnerability, and that was the a Debian vulnerability that I didn't patch because I never actually ran an update on this machine before installing this. So I guess that's good to know that there's only one, but uh, definitely I'd want to do an apt get uh, update. Now you can see there's HTML and the Nessus style files. It doesn't show PDF because I didn't install Java. It lets me choose what chapters I want to put into the report. I'm going to choose both vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities by host. And give it a second. It'll format that into a nice HTML page. Again, this one being a home feed, it says that commercial use of this report is prohibited. But you can see, sort of, there's a table of contents and then vulnerabilities listed one at a time here. Lots of information on each of them. If you've ever used Nests before, this probably looks pretty familiar anyway. This here, again, like I was talking about in the beginning, shows it as color-coded. That really is helpful to uh, point out errors. <laughs> and have our usual sections, policies, 
users. We can add a new user if we want a different admin. We can go into configuration and configure the host, the port. Under advanced here, it gives us all the options that will, used to be in the nessusd.conf. So we can configure everything right from here. We don't ever have to go back down to the command line. And if we even wanted to just download the next update from our feed or change our activation code, we can do that all right from here. See, it's uh, scheduled to download the new updates. And that's about it. We can even offline update if we wanted to. Just download to your management machine and then upload through the web page. Well, there you go, folks. That's the first look at Nessus version 5. If you're interested in computer security and you're not already using this at home, go ahead and give it a download. You do have to register it, uh, which means you have to give them your email address, but they promise not to spam you. Um, otherwise, it's free for home use. If you're a computer security person at work and you don't already have this or something very much like it, uh, sign up for an evaluation. They'll give you a 15-day trial of the, the professional feed for free. If you're a charity and you can't afford that $1,200 a year, fill in the, uh, the charity application and they may give you the whole product for free. Anyway, links for all the downloads. Um, registration forms, applications, whatnot, down in the doobly-doo. Um, go at it. So if you have any questions, comments, if there's anything that you want me to show you, uh, just leave a comment down in the uh, comment section below, and uh, I'll get back to you. Right. Later, YouTube.